Yes Bank and CNBC TV 18 present the Growth Summit Vision for a $10 trillion economy in association with Max Life Insurance. We will now have a conversation fueled with inspiration, grit and resilience. And to moderate the chat, I would like to call on stage Gaurav Kalra, Vice President Current Affairs, YCOM 18 Media. And ladies and gentlemen, we have with us one of India's most outstanding tennis champions. Having represented India in numerous international tennis events, including the Olympics and the Davis Cup, this champion has had consistent presence in Grand Slam events and has achieved career-high ranking in doubles. Please join me in welcoming Rohan Bopanna, Indian tennis player and Grand Slam champion world number one. The, uh, I need to do the thanks right here. The, the hint is in the name. So, thank you very much. Um, we're going to be talking about passion and persistence for long-term success. So all very big words. I know you're a sportsman and lots of uh, big words don't necessarily come into your life every day. But I want to begin, Rohan, by uh, just acknowledging what you've done. You are now, and I know Mukda mentioned it, but you are now the world number one in tennis, in men's doubles. Thank you, thank you very much. Just, just think about how many people around the world play tennis, and we are lucky enough now to be sitting across a man who is uh, right on top of that tree. Not just that, uh, you've done that at, really you're just a young man, you're only 43 years old, you're gonna be 44 in less than a month, but as you told me outside, that's just the thing. So I want to speak for all of the uh, 40 year olds in this room, uh, including myself and a lot, of the, a lot of others. Thank you for giving us hope, all of us who are facing this sort of midlife crisis in our jobs. Here you are, you can get to the top of the tree at 44. It, it must feel like, do you wake up sometimes and say, is the, all of this real? Uh, first of all, good evening uh, <laughs> to you all. Uh, lovely, lovely to be here something different from my normal job, so it's really nice uh, to do this. And uh, Gaurav, thank you. Uh, I wake up very happy with what I'm doing, and uh, you know, I, uh, the age is the last thing I'm uh, you know, really thinking about, uh, especially being at number one in the world. I don't think I should uh, even think twice about that, so really happy with uh, the way the year has been, the way how the progress has been. Uh, but yeah, just enjoying uh, the journey currently. Let's actually talk about that word perseverance. I mean, just for the audience here, Rohan uh, turned professional, which is how you become, uh, which is how, when you play on the circuit and make money, and that's your livelihood essentially. Back in 2004, if I'm, 2003 if I'm not mistaken, it's taken you 21 years, but you haven't given up. Uh, the team back here gave me some stats. There have been 19 different doubles partners, uh, men's doubles partners. There have been 61 slams that you've played and finally you're a men's doubles champion. I know you won a mixed doubles champion. So this kind of perseverance, where have you got this from to just keep doing this day in and day out? Uh, yeah, it's definitely taken a long, long uh, time and uh, you know, I was reading uh, this book where it says, and I'm sure you have heard this term of 10,000 hours. Uh, you know, I started my tennis journey at the age of 10 and I really feel initial stages, every academy I went to, they said I was not good enough. You know, I was uh, born in Bangalore but brought up in a place called Kurg. Uh, my parents still live there, um, you know, in the be beautiful land of uh, coffee. Um, but I think I never had anyone to really play with. So, you know, so the hours were, were less and I really feel I started maturing much later uh, the number one thing which I really had is no matter what uh, the coaches told me or the trainers told me, I woke up every single day and did that. I think that's the, uh, you know, perseverance side of me which kept me going no matter whether I was lo losing first rounds every single tournament I went to as a junior. I don't think uh, anyone in the country who has, you know, played tennis for a long period of time, they even heard my name in the junior circuit. 
It was only at the age of uh, 21 I had a big breakthrough. And uh, I really feel uh, four or five years ago I must have completed that 10,000 hours. And then, uh, uh, you know, that is where I feel now I've completely matured past that and using all my experience, uh, you know, to... Um, uh, understand myself and uh, you know enjoy uh, you know competing at the highest level yes and we've enjoyed watching you uh, the other aspect of your uh, of your of your success which is remarkable is that ladies and gentlemen i'd just like you to take a look at this wonderful athlete he's he's very fit he's all of this sort of remarkable international athlete but you've got the knees of a very very old man don't you you've got no cartilage in your in your knees so you're not supposed to be Competing in international sport, let alone beating the best players in the world. Once again, where has that come from that you will this sort of, let me, for want of a better expression, almost broken body of yours to reach right the top of the world? Uh, you're right, uh, Gaurav. Uh, yeah, the cartilages have completely worn out. Uh, but the good part is that, uh, uh, you know, these are the limitations uh, sometimes we set ourselves that, oh, okay. You know, my knees are weak and I can't do too much. But then I looked at it as and maybe it's an opportunity now to try and get better and see what we can do. And uh, end of 2019, when I realized uh, that my cartilages were fully worn out, um, my doctor in Bangalore said, try the platelet-rich plasma PRP injections. And he said the injections might work, but uh, it's not like you just take the injection and go place right after that. You need to do a lot of strengthening um, so the COVID time was kind of blessing in disguise for me. That's when I really discovered Iyengar yoga, even though yoga is, you know, part and parcel of, uh, uh, you know, a country, but I always thought it's something very slow. I wouldn't enjoy it. But at this juncture, I, um, I said, I need to try it because anytime I went to the gym, I tried to lift weights, did some leg press. It was too much of too much of pain and then uh, end of 2019 I was on 2-3 painkillers a day so I started during the pandemic I started doing Iyengar yoga for about uh, four times uh, in a week 90 minute sessions and surprisingly slowly the muscles started you know building up again and the strength uh, I could feel much stronger uh, immediately when I started playing tennis I didn't feel any pressure on the knees and that you know I, I said oh this is yeah, first of all, no pain, yeah, you know, which felt great. And uh, so then I went back to the yoga teacher and I said, you know, you know how I feel. And I said, okay, we worked on the knees, but I need to work on, you know, my entire body. And then um, somewhere I feel also my mind became calmer. On the court, I feel that I don't feel rushed. You know, I think clearly, I understand no matter whether it's a match point down, uh, set point down, uh, no matter what the scenario is, I don't feel that I'm, uh, you know, feeling tensed or feeling rushed in any single way. And I think that, that perspective uh, of uh, that mental strength has changed, which is, I think, really helped me in my journey yeah, for the past two years. Yes, in, in fact, uh, you won a record number of uh, tie breaks, if I'm not mistaken, at the Australian Open to ultimately win that tournament, which meant that you were always in pressure situations and you were responding really well to them. Now, now you know, since we are at this, uh, since we are at a growth summit and we should talk about um, how in the, the growth journey of an athlete, the fact that you're experiencing this high also comes at the back of some really uh, well, difficult lows that you've had to endure. And one of the things that caught my eye, and I'd like you to talk to people about that, Rohan, is you mentioned that there was one moment, I think three or four years ago, you have referenced this, where you actually recorded a video and sent it to your wife, saying, I think I'm done. Can you talk us through what that moment was and how uh, you found a way back from there to reach uh, where you are, the number one player in the world? Uh, yeah, Gaurav, that was an extremely uh, difficult period of time. It was in 2021. I played the professional circuit for about 18 years, and I was doing that every single uh, day, day in, day out. Um, and I started 2021, um, and I went five months without even winning a match. Uh, and that, that's when I could not understand what was going on, I, uh, you know, because I'd done this for so long, and I don't think that I had that kind of period where it was such a low that every time I was going to tournaments, doing the right thing, practicing, but I was not able to win the match. 
So I'm sitting in Portugal, there's a tournament in Estoril, and I'm sitting across the ocean. I love the water and everything. So it was amazing just sitting there. And I started expressing these thoughts in my head, uh, you know, to myself. And then after maybe 10, 15 minutes, I said, okay, let me, you know, pull out my phone, record a video, and send it to my wife of, you know, how I'm feeling. Uh, I said the best person is to send my wife because my wife is a psychologist, and I feel somewhere... She's ah, that explains the newfound maturity. Yeah? That's uh, what I was wondering about. She's my in-house shrink, I think, <laughs> you know, somehow. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, just expressing myself, I think, uh, totally started understanding, you know, how I was feeling. I suddenly got into this rat race of uh, saying I need to win matches in order to get my ranking better. My ranking is dropping and I needed to. I forgot why I started this journey, why I picked up tennis. The main reason was because I enjoyed the sport, I enjoyed competing. And for that three, four months, I kind of had lost that. So by just, you know, talking about it or speaking to it loudly and just recording myself on a video, suddenly I realized what I was missing. So the minute I went to the following week and I said, okay, let's just not worry about the result and, uh, uh, you know, enjoy the match. I won my first match and, you know, then it changed everything. Does the video still exist on your wife's phone or your phone? I think she has it. Okay. So, uh, I guess it's uh, the job of a, of a pesky journalist now to somehow get that video out and say, all right, four years ago, before and after. Let's talk a little bit about the role as a, as, as a role model now. I, like I said, you know, you can be a young athlete, have success. You did that. You've had a lot of success as a young athlete. Sure, this is the pinnacle. But um, even now, as a, uh, the success you're having in your 40s, uh, with so many people watching and admiring. Do you see that as an important facet of your, uh, of your role as an ambassador for sport, that you need to be a role model, not just to young people, but also to people such as a lot of us 40-year-olds in this, in this room who think, right, there's, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. No, I think uh, the biggest thing is there is no time limit. Yeah, you know, it... Uh, um, Success can come at any, any time. I don't think uh, uh, success come at a particular age. It can you know, come to all of us at uh, uh, any given time. And I uh, constantly tell a uh, lot of the parents who bring their students uh, to my academy in Bangalore, I keep telling them, don't be in a hurry. Um, and uh, the minute the kids are 14, 15, if they're not ranked top 10 in the country, they want to pull them out and send them to education and everything. I said, that is where we do best because we are spending maximum hours of time in the school. Hence, their priority is that. If you change that perspective and spend those hours in a sporting ground, the chances of them doing the same thing is extremely high. And any time a parent is there at a coaching center, I, I, maybe a few of you all have uh, witnessed this or heard this, that we are outside there watching our kids train, and then we tell the coach, this happened, he should have done this better. But not once as a parent we have ever gone to the classroom and told the teacher what to do. But when it comes to sport, we are all great sportsmen and coaches ourselves, knowing not, even though we have not played that sport. So I really feel that if you give that kid a chance and if you t send them to whatever academy, you need to trust the coaches like how we trust the teachers in the classroom. And similarly, it is a journey. It takes 10 months, 12 months to go to the next step. But in sport, after two, three months, say, example, John said, Rohan Bopana Academy, they want him to become the next Rohan Bopana in three, four years. It's impossible. It's impossible. No matter which coach you have in the world, it's not possible. So the journey, you know, I tell them, is a long journey. It's a process. No matter, yes, of course, there are exceptions that few people, you know, come out and, uh, you know, become world-class champions. I mean, but at the end of the day, it is still that constant day in, day out of sacrifices, which comes from the parents as well, including, you know, the children. I mean, for me, I've missed tons of birthdays, tons of family weddings and everything because my priority was, was tennis. I think that is something I try to keep telling them, no matter who it is, you need to find out what is your goal, what is your priority. And then I think at any age, it is possible to achieve that success. Yep. So if you're starting at 10, you could, be, you could wait 34 years, but you'll still get uh, that Grand Slam title, and that would be the journey. Why not? I mean, you know, if, uh, uh, 
if that is something you have started and you want to achieve the you know the best and be at the top i don't think there should be a time limit because everyone else sets those limitations for us it's not us who set the limitations <laughs> for ourselves there is another fascinating aspect about doubles tennis which i think uh, you know uh, people would appreciate understanding is that as opposed to the singles game obviously you're in it with a partner and there have been some wonderful uh, stories of your partners who you've had a lot of success with matthew abdon of australia normally indians and australians don't get along very well uh, if you look at the history in cricket so you've broken that mold as well but aisam al qureshi for instance from pakistan you guys reached the final of the us open 2010 that, uh, a, a long time back uh, sanya mirza with whom you've had a successful mixed doubles partnership um, can you talk us to talk us through um, what it takes to be building partnerships of this kind and and coming together as this doubles unit that actually has success i think very simple uh, garov the the biggest and uh, number one key is communication you know that's what builds good partnerships uh, no matter who i played with i really felt um, if you share a good rapport even off the court and build that camaraderie build that communication when you whenever i went on court and played with them it became that much easier especially when it was close moments tough moments uh, you know uh, kureshi and myself were friends for a long period of time before we even started uh, uh, you know playing the uh, doubles together one of the reasons we started was uh, uh when we were traveling um i was one player from india and he was one player from pakistan traveling and all the europeans are hanging out together south americans hanging out together and he said okay we have some common interests of in terms of food and everything and uh, you know tennis being such a lonely tour it's good to have some friends and i think that friendship started and before we even teamed up together uh, you know simultaneously all the other partners i think i you know got along uh, got along uh, with them off the court really well and that actually uh, you know helped in that partnership on the court as well one of the other wonderful things that's happening and you know i've spent a lot of time around sport uh, uh, i'm a little bit older than you although you know perhaps looking at us i probably can pass off as the younger man not really but uh, there's there's these wonderful stories that have come through which are non cricket stories uh, neera chopra we all know the success he's had uh, chirag satvik now number one ranked player uh, doubles pair in the world uh we are seeing you reaching the number one ranking in the world um uh, some of our young shooters ranked number one there's success across sport um and you play internationally a lot do you see a perception change about india about the way the nation is perceived and how um that's reflected in the sporting achievements we are having no i think uh, it makes a, a huge difference having support from the government corporates everyone coming together and supporting sports because i really feel we have phenomenal uh, talent in the country it's just that the lack of opportunities uh, you know which doesn't get us you know through there i mean if you look at uh, tennis you have to be a member of uh, a country club or uh, you know join an academy which is sometimes very expensive otherwise there's no really route to get there and thankfully to all these other sportsmen also who are doing uh, doing well has definitely change the uh, perspective of uh, you know the younger parents who want to get their kids uh, you know in uh, various different sports now and uh, uh, and i think sports builds um, a fantastic friendship tennis is a great teacher of uh, um, discipline uh, bringing a structure in place solving problem from a very young age teaching you failure from a very young age so i think sport itself i think is a uh, amazing thing to really pick up whether it is uh, recreational or professional you want to take it i think it just encourages so many different uh, levels and uh, uh, i'm i'm great to hear that you know are to see and be part of these guys who are doing well in various different sports and uh, i think india is just uh, growing in uh, 25 30 years we'll have uh, you know top athletes in every discipline i feel uh, just a side note all of the guys i mentioned they're all in their 20s huh? so you've Uh, you got That's why I said 20 more years. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've just got a couple of minutes now and uh, Rohan has to go as well. So, uh, just some final uh, couple of thoughts. Uh, I mean, you started the year really well. Um and there's a big touch point this year isn't there uh, which is the Olympics uh, in Paris few months to go from here. Of course, the way you're playing, you'll have to play with an Indian partner uh, all of that. Just thoughts on that given that there's been a bit of a sketchy history at the Olympics as far as Indian tennis players in the in the past are concerned. uh is that on your radar now having success at the olympics 
I think it, uh, the number one thing is just getting uh, tennis back at Olympics. I mean, having a spot there, being number one now, uh, I can uh, definitely choose uh, you know partner anyone who's ranked top 300 in the country. Uh, we do have a few players ranked from 60 to about 130. We have about 10 players. Um, anyone I'm going, to, I'm going to be playing with is going to making their debut. But I think that they have nothing to lose. I think the, uh, the opportunity is there to go and really represent uh, uh, the country. It's a fantastic opportunity. I mean, there's no, nothing bigger than representing your country at Olympics. And uh, uh, I really feel that um, as a team, we could be really dangerous. Nobody really knows uh, you know, how we're going to play. So, uh, and also at Olympics, uh, uh, you know, when, uh, like you said, you have to play with somebody from your own country. Uh, most of the doubles players on the circuit they are playing with partners from different countries. So they also have to, you know, come together and, uh, you know, get um, matched up pretty well. So I think anything can happen that one week. I've seen this, uh, you know, major change in the last four days of the Grand Slam, which I was playing. So, you know, uh, I'm definitely positive with that. All right, we're out of time. So final thoughts from uh, Rohan Bhavana before we leave. Uh, let him go. One, Novak Djokovic, uh, in that there was a lovely video doing the rounds after the Australian Open, said if you could partner him, when he finishes up playing doubles, is that on the cards? What would be lovely to see? Any chance of uh, a Bopana Djokovic pairing sometime at a Grand Slam? At a Grand Slam, definitely not. I don't think he, he <laughs> wants to play at a Grand Slam. But yeah, at an ATP event, uh, yeah, definitely possible. Right. Uh, you know, hopefully that uh, you know you happens one day. Heard it first here, Rohan Bopana and Novak Djokovic, and. I think I, I have to let you go. Lots of, uh, lots of films being made and biopics being made on uh, sports persons who've had success. So have you started to think about who should play Rohan Bopana if there's a Bollywood blockbuster made uh, on, uh, on you? Thank you, Gaurav. I think your time is up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything. Uh, uh, All right. We'll, we'll take a straw poll on that one. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you very much. Yes Bank and CNBC TV 18 present the Growth Summit vision for a $10 trillion economy in association with Max Life Insurance.